Um, you know, this question came to us from Dave on Twitter, who said well, you, you, he knows that Mr. Regal doesn't like to deal in negativity on the podcast, but there's a question that needs to be asked. Apparently, there's a story about you and maybe one uh, Texas rattlesnake leaving a Mick Foley on a beach of some type. And, uh, you know, and he asks, don't you have a no man left behind policy? And if you could talk about that particular okay. situation. Right. So I've written about this in, in my book, Mick read about it. Um, this is nearly 30 years ago. Um, we had gone to the Bahamas to wrestle the show for WCW. I, it's the only time that I can remember wrestling Mick Foley. Um, and, but it was expensive, really expensive to stay there where we were. And so we had a day off the next day and we flew back from, instead of staying in the Bahamas, we flew back because the next day we we're in Fort Lauderdale, I believe. And we, <laughs> I've always been a, one of, of having my own room and a decent bed. You know, there's the saving money and then there's not being smart as far as not looking, give, having a bit of peace of mind and a decent mattress, right? Uh, but whatever you float your boat. So there's three of us staying in this really not too high quality, in fact, the kind of place that you wipe your feet on the way out, right? It's got a pig on the, on, on the counter, okay. on, on, on the reception as an air freshener kind of a place, right? On the way <laughs> out. Right? Right. So we're staying in this, right? We come back early, the, the day early, we have a flight in the day early and we've got the day off and on the beach right across and we go walking across onto the beach now steve austin didn't look like stone cold at the time he had long blonde hair and, and i'm i'm me you know and i've got shorts on and then there's there's mick there's there's, there's cactus as i still call him and we walk out there and i come from a different world blackpool is a very, is, is a entertaining world of all kinds of people, entertainers, or it was certainly was in that, and it still is, but in, in the eighties, entertainers, theatrical people, circus people, a lot of drag queens, you know, there's like a huge drag community there, a big gay community there. I get on with everybody. I don't, I have no phobics or isms of any kind. Sure. And most people don't that I've met and they certainly don't either of them, but they, they absolutely don't. And I'm just saying that this, that needs to be heard. They absolutely don't. But if you're not used to being around that and all of a sudden what we did, we walked on the beach and I'm looking around and I figured it out straight away. I just hadn't told them because I just find I'm, I'm quite comfortable with it. Don't bother me. It's all fellas. It's a gay beach. And they're all in thongs and they're all oiling each other up, which is fine by me. Good for you. you know, I, I've, I've realized a long time ago, the only, real, only, only reason I'm not gay is because I'd hate to be turned down by fellas as well as women. Right? <laughs> I mean, that's, it doesn't bother me. What in this, and I've got, it just doesn't bother me in the slightest. But I've got it's no funny thing. When right. they, they don't know what's but going on. But they don't know. Right. And, and uh, 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 you know, it's, it, there's being okay with it, but then all of a sudden they're thinking they get, they, they're strutting around as, as men do, just like, you know, especially Steve and, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm actually just waiting. I, this isn't, I don't know if I've ever told this, but I, I figured it out straight away. I'm not just saying that. I figured it out. This is a gay beach. So all of a sudden, they're 
they're noticing. It's all fellas, right? right? And so very quickly, instead of me and Steve walking next to each other, Mick gets puts in the middle of us, like when, because Steve's like, like, oh no, like we just, it, nothing wrong with that, but we just don't want to look like a couple. Whereas I couldn't have cared less, I'd have grabbed his hand if, it, if, I, if I'd have known that would have bothered him, because I'm just like that, I don't care. But, they're in such right. a, a state that putting Mick Foley in the middle of you two seemed like the best seemed like the thing. option. Right. <laughs> so we're walking about now. I, it comes from, this is awful. Again, no phobics, no isms of any kind, but I am a, come from a different time where, oh, and it was quite okay to say certain things that you wouldn't say now. And I, I learned, you know, it's once, but being around the people I was with and being around a lot of, and, and around a lot of, a lot of my, you know, people I know are gay and like, just certain terms were just what street people, you know, or, or us used. Well, I've, the term that Mick Foley puts in his book I've only ever heard it one time and it's on, it's out of a movie called No Surrender, which is a fantastic movie. Um, and it's used in that. And I found it so preposterous to, that it became part. I still say lines out of that movie, me and Robbie Brooks, I'd still quote lines out of this movie. It's a incredible film. I don't know if American people would get it. If you're British, you would get it, or you would if you know a little bit of history. It's set in Liverpool on New Year's Eve night. There's a new manager for a club, and when he gets there, because of the the, the different um, um, religious beliefs, it, it, Liverpool is a country uh, is a is a place of Protestants and Catholics, which have just been fighting th through the ages. And, and the club owner who was supposedly left as, as this new club owner starting and the, 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 on his way out, he thinks he's, he's messing with the people who own it. And he has booked in a group of old, um, see as seniors, as you call them, old age pensioners, as we call them, a group of Catholics and Protestants and chaos in shoes. Let's put it that way. Right. One of the, right. And there's a, a fella in there who is still a, a, a DJ in, in Liverpool, Pete Price. Pete Price ends up as a compare and Pete Price is openly gay. And Pete Price plays a, basically a version of himself because he was a, a club, he was a club comedian. And, and flamboyantly open about being gay in the sixties and seventies and never cared. And still, you know, that's his thing. And, and we all know Pete and, and, and you know, it's just Pete's, Pete's somebody that all the wrestlers knew and, you know, but Pete's playing basically a, a caricature of himself in this movie as the club comper. Well, he comes in and Bernard Hill, who is a, a very famous British actor, was in Titanic and that he's the bouncer and obviously he's playing a homophobic person and he uses this term to call Pete Bryce calls him something. And I, it was just, it's just so ridiculous. That's what I had other terms. It was just thrown around at the time. Once I came to America, I didn't use them terms. Right. When I was around people that didn't care, I used those terms. I've never used bad terms about with race or anything, but when your friends that are all get and they all talk right. and they call themselves old Queens and whatever else you, you and, and whatever else it's, it, it, it's just, you know, I know it sounds like it's not, it's because that was just what it was. And so I'm in my early twenties. I, 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 I just, but I just say this word, I said, oh, we're surrounded by such and such a word. I'm not going to say it anymore because it's. Right. It was just like say a, a line from a movie that I found funny and right. I'd never heard it before and I've never used it since. Um, but 
that was it. What, as soon as we figured out, me and Steve looked at each other and jokingly, cause Mick as Mr. Right on as he is, it's still, a, and, and, and he's again, all, all three of us, no phobics, no isms, but it's still, if you, it's a, it's a culture shock. If you've never been left on a gay beach right. in the Bahamas. Well, he, he decided we, we, we're not leaving. We're not like in, in any kind of, I, I'm enjoying it because I'm finding it funny that they're, they're, they're a bit uncomfortable. Right. But Mick goes out into the sea. Now Mick is, you know, is different shaped. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and he has this incredible thing where he can, ju he just floats on the water. He just walks out, lies down and just floats like he's on an airbed. Right. And I'm watching it and I'm going, that, that's unbelievable. I don't know how he does it. All right. He hasn't quite figured out the situation. Well, Steve Austin has now, and he's like laughing at me. Cause our hotel is across the street. So we can go and stand in our hotel on where the pool is and still see him. Right. So I've run back. We we've, we've both got, we've gone, Oh, Let's leave him there because now he's got to get out the water right. and have, and, and look, probably a hundred, hundred fellas that are all wearing thongs and oiled up. He's got to walk through them all. Right. So we just ran back like little children giggling <laughs> just to watch his own comfort as we left him there and just stood on the other side of the road as he's, cause he's got out. I, I have to backtrack. I, I said that we'd figured this out. I'd figured this out. Steve, Steve and, and, and Mick in, this is my recollections. They hadn't figured it out. Mick's gone in the water. That was it. That was it. I'm getting this right now. Mick was in the, in the water. I figured it out. I've said to Steve, oh, you know, I gave it, he's, he's like, oh, I didn't care, but oh, but Mick hasn't figured it out. Right. So Mick's got out the water thinking, oh, you know, it, 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 and Mick's you know, a wonderful man. And, and, and it's not about, again, it's, it's male ego. It's not about trying to get any ladies. It's just, you know, I'm going to, the ladies are going to see me, right? right? Cause he's just been floating and doing something the most well, uh, well, he gets out and realizes there's all fellas in, 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 neon yellow and pink thongs all staring at me. So he, he comes sort of trotting up the beach a little bit quick, right? Like this, like there's a baby alligator snapping at his backside. Like he's quickly coming he has, up. Like he has he's no just, idea where you guys are. Yeah. And we're just laughing at him. So that really is the, the story, um, about it. It, it, it reads better in a book, but it, 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 it it comes across that that was basically, we just left him so we could go and watch him and re make him when he realized that he was, he was surrounded by, by, by fellas, young men in, in thongs all staring at him when he th thought he was going to be drying off in front of the young ladies. I mean, you never know. He might've just camped out and stayed there forever. So well, why not? And, yeah. and good for him, you know, 